Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is a 2002 stealth video game developed by UBI Soft Montreal and built on the Unreal Engine 2. It is the first game in the Splinter Cell series. Endorsed by author Tom Clancy, it follows the activities of NSA Black Ops agent Sam Fisher. The character of Fisher is voiced by actor Michael Ironside. The game was inspired by the Metal Gear series. The game is available for Xbox, Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Mac OS X 2D. Versions of the game were released for the Game Boy Advance and N-Gage, the latter as Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, Team Stealth Action, as well as the mobile phone's version developed by Gameloft. A remastered high-definition version of Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell was released on the PlayStation 3 in September 2011. The success of the game series spawned a series of novels written under the pseudonym David Michaels. Gameplay The primary focus and hallmark of Splinter Cell's gameplay is stealth, with heavy emphasis on light and darkness. The player is encouraged to move through the shadows for concealment whenever possible. The game displays a light meter. That reflects how visible the player character is to enemies, and night vision and thermal vision goggles to help the player navigate in darkness or smoke, fog, respectively. Splinter Cell heavily encourages the use of stealth over brute force. Although Sam Fisher is usually equipped with firearms, he carries limited ammunition and is not frequently provided with access to additional ammo. The player begins most missions with a limited supply of less than lethal weapons in addition to Fisher's firearms, a suppressed FN 5.7 sidearm, as well as a suppressed FN F2000 assault rifle midway through the game, which includes a telescopic sight and a launcher for some of the less lethal devices such as ring airfoil projectiles, sticky shockers, and CS gas grenades. Flexibility of movement is a focus point of Splinter Cell. Fisher can sneak up on enemies from behind to grab them, allowing interrogation, quiet incapacitation, or use as a human shield. Fisher is acrobatic and physically adept, and has a variety of maneuvers including the ability to mantle onto and climb along ledges, hang from pipes, and perform a split jump in narrow spaces to mantle up a steep wall. Topic. Plot. In April 2004, the president of Georgia is assassinated, allowing Georgian billionaire Combine Nikoladze to seize power with a bloodless coup d'état. In August 2004, former U.S. Navy SEAL officer and Gulf War veteran Sam Fisher is recruited by the National Security Agency to work within its newly formed division, Third Echelon. Working with his old friend Irving Lambert, Fisher is introduced to technical expert Anna Grimm, Grimm's daughter, and field runner Vernon Wilkes Jr. In October 2004, Fisher is dispatched to Tbilisi, Georgia to investigate the disappearance of two CIA officers. Fisher attempts to meet an informant, Thomas Gurganides, only to find him dying in a burning building. Gurganides warns that one agent's transmission mentioned proof that could cause a war. Finding the agent's corpses in a police morgue, Fisher learns that a former Spetsnaz agent, Vyacheslav Grinko, removed their subdermal tracking implants. Tracking Grinko's license plate number using CCTV, Third Echelon tracks him to the Georgian Ministry of Defense. Fisher arrives at the ministry, and records a meeting between Grinko and Canadian hacker Philip Mass, through which he learns that Nikoladze is conducting an illegal operation in Azerbaijan. Fisher hacks Nikoladze's computer, and learns Nikoladze has been waging an ethnic cleansing campaign across Azerbaijan, by deploying Georgian commandos. In retaliation, NATO forces enter Azerbaijan, prompting Nikoladze to go underground. Third Echelon learns that Georgian soldiers stationed on a Caspian oil rig have been exchanging data with the Georgian presidential palace. Fisher infiltrates the rig during the middle of a NATO airstrike to apprehend a local technician, Lehava, and retrieve his laptop containing the rig's computer data. After interrogating the technician, Fisher learns that the data contains a file on the Ark. Fisher recovers his laptop and encryption key and extracts. Examining Lehava's laptop, Grimm reveals that the intel could have come from a CIA mole. Lambert then reveals that North America has just been hit by a massive cyber warfare attack, directed primarily against military targets. In a broadcast, Nikoladze claims responsibility for the attack and officially declares war on the United States and its allies. 
Fisher infiltrates the CIA headquarters and accesses the CIA computer mainframe, allowing Grimm to trace the data leak to the computer of Mitchell Doherty. Captured for interrogation, Doherty claims ignorance of the leak, but the NSA learns that his obsessive compulsive disorder caused him to back up data on an insecure laptop, which was exploited by a Virginia based network owned by Kalinatech, Inc. Georgian hired mafiosos attempt to remove all traces of Nikoladze from the Kalinatech offices by destroying the building and murdering the staff. Intercepting a 911 call from a technician named Ivan, Fisher is deployed to the building and retrieves Ivan's encryption key while the FBI rescues Ivan. Fisher extracts with the help of Wilkes, who is mortally wounded in the process and later dies. Using the encryption key, the NSA discovers Nikoladze has been using a network of unconventional relays to communicate with Georgian military cells. The NSA traces the full relay network to the Chinese embassy in Yangon, Myanmar. Worried Chinese support could cause World War III, Fisher sneaks into the embassy and eavesdrops on a conversation between Nikoladze and General Kong Firong, and learns they are working together. Fisher learns that captured U.S. Army soldiers and high-ranking Chinese officials are in a local slaughterhouse, so he delays interrogating Firong to save the hostages, who are scheduled to be executed on a live broadcast. Fisher meets with a Chinese official among the hostages, and learns that Firong is part of a rogue collective not backed by the Chinese government. Fisher is detected, and in a firefight, Fisher kills Grinko. Returning to the embassy, Fisher grabs a drunken Firong before he can commit suicide, and forces him to share the information stored on his computer. The information reveals Nikoladze has fled back to Georgia, where he is trying to activate a suitcase nuke known as the Ark. Infiltrating the Georgian presidential palace containing Nikoladze and new de facto Georgian president Varlam Kristavi, Fisher attempts to recover the key to the Ark, which has been placed somewhere in the United States. Fisher corners Nikoladze, who bargains to give the Ark key in exchange for safe passage out of Georgia. Fisher then recovers the key, at which point Kristavi's forces arrive and escort Nikoladze to safety. About to be executed, Fisher escapes when Lambert causes a brief blackout. Discovering Nikoladze is offering the Ark's location for protection, Fisher assassinates Nikoladze. Discovering the Ark, the U.S. Army evacuates an apartment complex in Hope Gate, Maryland on claims of a gas leak, and secretly recovers the Ark. Despite World War III being averted, Nikoladze's corpse sparks international backlash due to the suspicious circumstances around his death. Watching the presidential broadcast on the crisis, Fisher then receives a secure phone call from Lambert for another assignment. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Development. The game originally started development in as a sci-fi James Bond type game called The Drift, which Ubisoft intended to be a Metal Gear Solid 2 killer. The game's producer Matthew Furland said, Metal Gear Solid was a huge inspiration for Splinter Cell. The game's designer and writer Clint Hawking also said Splinter Cell owes its existence to the Metal Gear series, while noting he was also influenced by System Shock, Thief and Deus Ex, because the development team was aiming for a teen ESRB rating, the team tried to minimize the level of violence. The soundtrack for the game was composed by English composer Michael Richard Plowman. Topic. Version differences The PC version of Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is fairly closely based on the original Xbox version. Both were made by Ubisoft Montreal. The GameCube and PlayStation 2 versions, released later, were developed by Ubisoft Shanghai, and are similar to each other, but have many small changes over the originals with the result that they are generally easier. Some doors are moved around, guards are less likely to notice gunshots, etc. Each version of the game has some exclusive features. The Xbox and Windows versions have three new downloadable missions which involve a Russian nuclear sub. The PlayStation 2 version includes an exclusive level which takes place in a nuclear power plant, new cinematics, a new intro cinematic with original music by the Prague Orchestra, and many behind-the-scenes interviews and documentaries both about the new intro and the game itself. The GameCube version includes the same cinematics, uses the Game Boy Advance Link cable to give players a real-time overhead map, a new sticky bomb weapon, and progressive scan 480p support. 
Additionally, both the GameCube and PlayStation 2 versions include new binoculars items. A PlayStation 3 version was announced to be part of the Splinter Cell trilogy which was released in September 2011 as part of Sony's Classics HD series. It was revealed on the PlayStation blog that it would be ported from the PC version, because it had more details and more content than the PlayStation 2 version. It was released on the European PlayStation Network on August 10, 2011. The PlayStation 3 version does not include the downloadable bonus missions that the Xbox or PC version had. Reception Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell received positive reviews upon the game's release. GameSpot's Greg Kasavin said that Splinter Cell has hands down the best lighting effects seen in any game to date. IGN likewise praised the game for its graphics and lighting, while also praising how it evolved Metal Gear Solid's third-person stealth action gameplay. Both praised the game's audio, noting that Michael Ironside as Sam Fisher's voice suited the role perfectly. Scott Allen Marriott of Allgame gave the Xbox version four and a half stars out of five, and called it one of the few games to elicit a feeling of suspense without resorting to shock techniques found in survival horror titles like Resident Evil. Criticism of the game was also present. Greg Kasavin said that Splinter Cell is sometimes reduced to frustrating bouts of trial and error. In addition, Kasavin criticized the game's cutscenes, saying that they are not up to par with the rest of the game's graphics. Non video game publications also gave the game favorable reviews. Entertainment Weekly gave the Xbox version an A and called it, wickedly ingenious. The Village Voice gave the PlayStation 2 version 8 out of 10 and said, If this game were any more realistic, you'd have to hold in your farts. The Cincinnati Enquirer gave the Game Boy Advance version all four stars and said that while it lacks 3D graphics and an impressive use of lighting and shadows found in its predecessors, the stealthy action game still captures the thrill of modern espionage. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Sales. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell was a commercial success. Pre-orders reached 1.1 million units, and the game sold 480,000 copies worldwide by the end of 2002, after three weeks on sale. By March 31, 2003, its sales had risen to 3.6 million copies. Splinter Cell sold 4.5 million copies by June and 5 million by the end of September, and its sales reached 6 million units by the end of March 2004. By July 2006, the Xbox version of Splinter Cell had sold 2.4 million copies and earned $62 million in the United States alone. Next Generation ranked it as the 10th highest selling game launched for the PlayStation 2, Xbox or GameCube between January 2000 and July 2006 in that country. It remained the best selling Splinter Cell game in the United States by July 2006. The game's PlayStation 2 and Xbox versions each received a Platinum Sales Award from the Entertainment and Leisure Software Publishers Association ELSPA, given to titles that sell at least 300,000 copies in the United Kingdom. Splinter Cell's computer version received a Silver Sales Award from ELSPA, indicating sales of at least 100,000 copies in the United Kingdom. Topic: <laughs> Awards E3 2002 Game Critics Awards, Best Action, Adventure Game Third Annual Game Developers' Choice Awards, Excellence in Writing Sixth Annual Interactive Achievement Awards, Console Game of the Year, Outstanding Achievement in Game Play Engineering IGN Best of 2002, Xbox Game of the Year, Xbox Best Graphics Splinter Cell was a runner-up for Computer Games Magazine's list of the 10 best games of 2003. Topic. Nominations Third Annual Game Developers' Choice Awards, Game of the Year, Original Game Character of the Year, Excellence in Game Design, Excellence in Level Design, and Excellence in Programming Sixth Annual Interactive Achievement Awards, Innovation in Console Gaming, Outstanding Achievement in Sound Design, Outstanding Achievement in Visual Engineering, and Console Action, Adventure Game of the Year 
IGN Best of 2002, Overall Game of the Year.